actually, when people hear my bio, they get confused because they're, they're like, who leaves a career in broadcasting to work full time for gender equality? You know, I mean, a lot of people are like, cool, but huh? Um, but you see, it fits. It works. Because back at CNN, one of the big things that I used to do is fact checking. I was always busting myths. And in the process of doing my work, I discovered that there are all these myths that are holding back gender equality. And in fact, this is so counterintuitive, I know. I discovered that there are all these myths about men that no one was correcting, literally. No one was correcting them. And these myths end up hurting women. So I started doing it, and it just kind of grew into this big thing, and now it became what I do. And these myths pop up all the time. I'm seeing them all the time. You all probably saw these reports not long ago, these headlines that were uh, saying that this study had found that 60% of men are now uh, refusing, they now say they're refusing to mentor women because they're afraid to be alone with women in the Me Too era. 60%. I mean, that's crazy. Um, and it's also wrong. This is a perfect example of the kind of thing that I run into. I looked into it. People had misread a sentence in a news release. It's actually 9% of men that say they're avoiding mentoring women. And that's a good example of how we need the facts in order to build solutions. Because in that case, we need to know who are these 9% of men. And what do they have in common? What are, where do they work? What are their sources of information? So we can find them and target men who are like them and fix the problem and say, yo, make sure you mentor women. So there are tons of, of things that I'm fact checking all the time, but there's one in particular that I want to focus on today because it's a myth that I thought society had gotten over. Uh, but it turns out we have not, and it's still causing problems for all of us in this room. And this myth is that most men are not truly caring. As the myth goes, uh, being caring is not admired among groups of men in male culture, so guys don't develop that trait, so we end up not being that caring. Um, and it's a myth that sadly gets propagated sometimes at events for women by men who think they're helping. Because they'll come along and they'll say things like, um, you know, out there in the world, it's all toxic masculinity. Everything's toxic, but I'm special. So I have decided to embrace my caring side. And that sounds really positive and really great, but what it really does is reinforce a negative and false stereotype that most men are not caring. And it's a stereotype that I'll go into now that hurts our workplaces, uh, prevents us having a level playing field for women in the workplace, and hurts families, which is something that my family could tell you very well. Um, huh, my wife and I have three awesome children. Um, but our entry into parenthood each time, our arrival of, of each kid, was crazy extra drama. Uh, our first child, we found out at birth that he would need major heart surgery. Um, yes, this was a nightmare, but the doctors were able to find the part of his heart that was a problem and fix it. You know, facts, solutions, they found it, they fixed it, and he's grown up perfect, of course. He's so awesome. Um, I had the same response to becoming a dad that most men do, and that is that suddenly I cared a lot about long-term financial future. So I would do these super long days at work, because I got paid more that way, but I'd start at 3 a.m., come home, spend all evening with him, didn't want to miss time, I'm a modern dad. But I wasn't taking care of myself, I was super stressed, which is the norm. Baby number two, we had drama again, he was born into my arms in an emergency on the floor of our bedroom. Um, we're not apparently alive. There's no sign at first that he was alive. It, his eyes were shut, there was no movement, the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck five times. It all worked out great, and this will not happen to you. I'm not here to traumatize you first thing in the morning. <laughs> My family, we're the exception for being the rule, so we're the exception, so you can be the rule. Um, but, and I'm also, by the way, I'm super careful to talk only about my experience. My wife is an awesome human being who speaks for herself. I can tell you that as I processed the trauma of that moment, I came to see that at that time, my values were so clear. I didn't care about money. I care about family, life, love, being there, connection. So around that time, I started interviewing fellow dads on TV, and the wildest thing happened. I aired these segments in which we're having normal conversations about loving and caring and all the things we do, and we got these huge responses from around the country and all over the world from people saying they didn't know that men in real life have the same conversations that women do. They had never seen it represented on TV. They didn't know. So I took that fact-checking lens, and I turned it onto modern fatherhood. And I reported things like the average working father spends three hours each workday caring for his kids. 
almost all dads care for their kids at home in every major category, every day of the week or several days. And here's a, a big and really important one. By far, the majority of black fathers live with their children, and they are on average the most involved. The stereotypes you hear are false. Now you might be thinking, okay, but we're kicking off a... Uh, go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, it's important. Hmm. Now, here's how I came to understand why male caregiving is such a crucial women's rights issue. That's baby number three. Uh, my wife and I realized that I would be needed at home for caregiving after the birth. That's normal. Guys do caregiving. However, in America, our policies have not kept up with the modern family. So I was under these policies at work that were sadly typical. Um, anyone could get 10 paid weeks after having a kid, except a guy who got his wife pregnant. Anybody except a biological father could have that time. A guy like me could only get two weeks. I challenged it internally, nothing came of it. Then, because it's my family, my daughter was born prematurely in an emergency at 35 weeks, still no answer. 11 days later, I'm home holding my four pound preemie, caring for my sick wife and my two boys, and that's when work said no, I could not have the time. Um, so long story short, I launched legal action, and it got a ton of attention, and the, com the company ended up revolutionizing its policy, making it much better for almost everyone, moms and dads. From the moment that I, I announced this legal action, I got all this support from women's groups across the country and around the world. And I was given a chance to go write a book about this experience, and so I looked into it. What's going on here? Why did so many people care about this case? And here's what I came to understand. We have, to this day, a bunch of structures that are still sitting around from the Mad Men era that are designed to push women to stay home and do all the caregiving and to prevent men from doing the caregiving. So there are all these policies that are designed to make sure, no, the woman's going to do all the caregiving, which takes choices away from families, prevents women from being able to pursue their careers when they would choose to have the man do caregiving. In fact, the stigmas are so powerful, even the minority of men in America who have access to any paternity leave, often they cannot take it. Men have been fired or demoted for daring to take any paternity leave. So I, being me, wanted to look into why is this? What's the source of all this? What's leading people to do this? You know what it is? Myths about gender. This core belief that women are truly the caring ones, so they should be home doing the caregiving, and the belief that men, when it comes down to it, are not truly caring. See how this all fits together? That myth prevents women from having choices. There are people who genuinely believe that if a guy says he wants paternity leave, since men aren't truly caring, he's really going to go home, kick, open, kick up his feet, watch sports, crack open a beer, and wait for his wife to come home and do everything. Which, if you know anything about taking care of babies, that is an insane thing to even imagine. But this is what a lot of people think. The workplace needs a reality check. And fortunately, I have facts for that. Uh, I have tons of them at my website. Here are just a few that I, I will talk about. This is an agency called Dove Men Plus Care that I now do some work with. Um, and they worked with a the university. They did this research. The overwhelming majority of men describe themselves as fun-loving and unafraid to express emotions and say it's important for men to be affectionate and genuine. I like numbers. I'm just going to toss a couple of them at you here. Um, is it important for a man to demonstrate he's caring? 94% of men say yes. Does it take strength and confidence to show your vulnerable side? 88% say yes. This is the norm. This is the new norm. But it remains in the shadows. People don't know about this. And as a result, we're not getting the kind of action that we could be. You see, all the data shows us that men want more time at home to do caregiving, but they can't get it. And that this is a huge source of frustration for men and women. Now, I'm obsessed with solutions. So the good news is I now work with businesses to fix this problem, and I can tell you what works. First, for all managers in the room, or anyone with access to managers, or future managers, make sure that in your workplaces, all of the work-life policies, from family leave, to flexible hours, to teleworking, make sure they are equally available to men and women, not just in policy, but in culture. If you look around and you see men are not using them, it's not because they don't want to. It's because they are scared to because they think they'll be punished. But there's also something we can all do at our own levels in the conversations that we have in the workplace. You see, men always tell me that they are terrified to talk about this. They will not bring it up in the workplace because they are convinced that if they say anything about this being a struggle, that someone will say to them, you man and the patriarchy, 
who are you to say you have any troubles at all? And they don't want to offend. But then as a result, this problem stays hidden in the shadows when we could be working together to fix it. So women ask me all the time. I work with UN women. I, I work with uh, women's groups around the world. They ask, what can I do? I say, literally just turning to a male colleague and saying, I struggle with this. I'm trying to finish this huge project while still being there for my kids. I know you've got kids too. How do you handle it? That would be revolutionary for a guy. And you find that it kind of opens the floodgates toward pragmatic, helpful conversations. And I tell men all the time, it's time to dip your toe in those waters. It's time to start talking about caring and caregiving and the fact that it is incredibly important to you as well. Because when we do that, when we open up about this, then we find that we actually can work together to solve this problem. And that's part of what I love so much about busting myths. You find the truths, and very often those truths can help you build solutions that will lead to something fantastic. And there's one more thing we can do. Uh, the next time you're at an event, or really anywhere, and um, a guy steps forward and says, um, effectively, I'm special and unusual and different because I embrace my caring side because I'm so caring. The best thing you can say is, of course you do. That's what all good people do. See, what we need to do is take away any sense of stigma, gender stigma around the idea of caring. It is the best part of the human experience. And ultimately, the things that make me, me, are things that I share with the overwhelming majority of men, statistically. The fact that I value time with my family above all else, way more than money, way more than these other things. They don't make me exceptional or different. They just make me part of the norm among humanity. And this is something we could tackle together. I hope in the spirit of TED, you will find that an idea worth spreading. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me today. Thank you.